2011, I took a set of S2000 AP1 tail lights and cut them up. A gas flame and hot knife was used to prevent shavings entering the light. I worked out the wiring and thought I would make custom tail lights. My groundbreaking designs were made on plywood. Single LEDs were drilled into the wood. I used diodes, voltage regulators and resistors. The crude handmade circuits were glued in place. The results were different. My custom taillights were unique. I even used downlights for the reverse lights. The LEDs would blow out now and then and need replacing. The original diffusers did indeed diffuse the effect. What we needed was more technology. Let's skip forward six years to 2017. These are flexible LED strips in a silicone sleeve. They only have the one colour and do not flash. The silicone neon LED strips would be put in through the cutouts I originally made. The silicone sealant can be easily removed so the cutouts can be opened. Silicone neon LED strips were to go inside here. A hot soldering iron was used to make the hole that would allow the LED strip to be inserted. I did not use a Dremel as the shavings would enter the tail light. The silicone of the LED strip will stick to the clear acrylic of the tail light when we try and feed it through. I thus needed access to help feed the LED strip through. Access was gained through the diffusers. This was December 2017. You can see the reindeer on the the reindeer antlers on the roof for Christmas. lights were downlight white Cree LEDs. The indicators had PVC rings to try to achieve an extreme light cutoff. The diffusers in the tail lights spread the light too much. Moving now to 2021, this is the technology I want. This is a red amber switchback LED strip. The switchback circuitry is on the LED strip built in. When you indicate, the red switches to amber flowing mode. Unfortunately, the strip comes in a PVC jacket. The PVC only flexes in two dimensions. Taking the LED strip out of the PVC jacket did not have a nice result. I needed the strip to fit my 2007 silicone neon silicone tube. So the plan is to use the 2017 silicone strips and fit the new 2021 switchback LED strips inside. The new LED strip is as wide as the original silicone. The silicone strips will not fit the new width LED strips. We use a sharp scalpel blade and carefully cut out through the silicone waterproofing. You can see the IC of the flashing circuitry here. It's interesting that the LEDs actually face the tape of the PVC jacket. I threaded some very thin stainless steel wire through the silicone. A vise is used to hold the ends of the stainless wire. The silicone strip is carefully pulled and the wire cuts a straight line. This method cuts neater than trying to use a blade and a straight edge. The new, wider 2021 LED strip can be placed inside the silicone. I found later that it is important to close the silicone or the strip will work its way out. The new LED strip is placed inside the silicone, 
fine stainless wire is used to tie the silicone at regular intervals. When the strip is inside the tail light, the bends try to dislodge the LED strip from the silicone. Here I'm using my fingers. But later, artery forceps are used to tie the wires. We bend the twisted ends back into the silicone. Exposed wire ends are sharp and can scratch the clear tail light. Here we see the original PVC strip that's on the top there. This is the indicator mode coming up. Here we see the new silicone wrapped LED strips. The advantage is these can bend a little bit more. I had to burn two extra holes to let the strip protrude from both ends. The sequential strip needs the control wires to come from the middle of the light housing. We see later that the burning fumes makes marks on the inside of the clear section. I started threading the new modified LED strip into the tail light. Again removal of the reflectors allows access because the silicone sticks. If you push or pull too hard you can damage the fragile circuitry. All LED strip lights are prone to breaking while handling. It's actually a good idea to order two sets of sequential LED strips in case you damage a set. Coat hanger wire was used to guide the silicone through the tail light. What are COV LEDs? COB stands for chip on board. It's a new technology where all that LEDs are packed close together. This is 2021 technology that I wanted for my tail lights. Heat gun was used so I did not damage any of the electronic circuitry that I will need later. I started at around 100 degrees Celsius but ended up at around 130 degrees Celsius. The glue that holds the clear section in place is called butyl cement. The butyl cement goes back to a hard state when it cools down. The cement is very difficult to remove when it hardens. Be careful not to bend the black plastic too much. This is one of the holes that allows the LED strips to go through. If the black plastic is bent too much it is difficult to get it back together. If you use pry tools remember the butyl cement is very difficult to clean off anything. I removed the wires from my lighting circuitry from 2011. The thin aluminium was used to make flat circles to house the new Cobb Halo lights. After cutting out a lot of circles I found that the S2000 space is more oval than round. We can see the amount of haze and the contaminants inside. A lot of the haze was toxic gas that spread through when I burned the side holes. Without removal of the clear lenses, I would not have been able to clean the haze off. Each light fitting takes about 60 minutes to open. You can see the haze there. I used a Dremel with a fine steel cutting bit to cut slots. The Cobb Halo lights have tabs that will fit the slots. We test fit the Cobb Halos. We use the first template to cut the second template. Make two templates per tail light. We test fit the wiring. Drill a hole so that wires from each compartment can cross over. We use a matte black spray paint and paint the templates. The templates are aligned.
You can see the oval shape of the taillights leads to this gap. The gap will be filled with Sikaflex polyurethane. A bead of Sikaflex is squirted around the edges. Wet detergent finger technique is used to smooth the Sikaflex. Fine tweezers are used to thread the wires to opposite compartments. This is because we have two stop lights and have separated the reverse end indicators. This shows the number of cleaning agents I tried to remove the haze inside the tail lights with. Methylated spirits was the best cleaning solvent. The haze of plastics and butyl cement residue is very difficult to remove. Be careful not to damage the matte black paint when clipping the cob lights into place. Rings were fitted and wires were fed through. The choice of ring sizes is variable. Now testing begins. We can see the right side lights are not extreme cutoff. The left side lights are extreme cutoff. How did we achieve the extreme cutoff? The Cobb halo lights have to have the edges masked. Lack of masking will diffuse the light into adjacent halos. I used black automotive vinyl strips to mask the edges of the halos. In this video we can see where the black vinyl stops light transmission into the next halo. The vinyl is wrapped tightly. A sharp scalpel blade is used to trim the excess vinyl off. Stick the ends down with a dab of Sikaflex so it never works loose. This shows the extreme cutoff of the indicator on the left. The non-masked indicator on the right lights up too much, lights up the other ring. Use compressed air to blow out any dust before the lights are sealed. These LED strip ends need to be threaded back through as the tail light is sealed through these holes. You can take the temperature up to 140 degrees Celsius when putting this thing back together. Lots of plants are used to try and close the gaps. A tip would be to heat fold the black plastic so that it is over folded back and then put it back together. I used compressed air to try and cool the black plastic when it was held in place. Now the park to brake dimmer. In 2007 I used inefficient voltage regulators that got hot. Now I'm using highly efficient buck converters. I will have one circuit in each tail light. These are used so we can have a dim park light and a bright brake light. A power diode will prevent current going to the wrong places. We work out some settings to make sure the parking lights are not too bright or dim. The buck converters are wired into the back of the tail lights. An option is to have the spoiler lit as well. Double sided tape adheres and insulates the board from the metal template. This shows the cover of the housing going over the electronic buck converter. You will see the small quick connectors in most of my projects. It's a good idea to label all wires for future reference. Here's a comparison of the OEM and the new custom tail lights. When power is applied, the strip lights light up. I made the red strip lights run when the car is switched on. The central brake light can be set as a dim running light. Diodes can be placed if you do not want the central running light. Small relays were installed to give a full 12 volt to the strip lights when indicating. When the indicator turns off, the red light running light comes back. The original signal from the indicator wires did not have enough voltage to drive the sequential strip indicators. When the brake is applied, the full 12 volts is applied to all of the LEDs. The low voltage from the indicators was overcome by using relays. The white ring lights are very bright when reversing. Thanks for watching.